As Your Heart Betrays You Part 23 A Miraculous Ladybug Fan Fiction Written and Narrated by Mira Rose Artwork for the Opening and Thumbnail Image by Even Art Adam on Instagram and Tumblr You can find a link to her social media accounts in the description box as well as the previous 22 parts of this story If you've skipped some parts Go back and listen to them. Take your time. There's no rush. Now then, if you're still listening, comment, Marinette Hurt. Please enjoy As Your Heart Betrays You, Part 23. Marinette Dupang Chang, 21 years old. For the first time in a long time, Marinette didn't leave her room. She stayed in bed, surrounded by projects that didn't help her mental stability and didn't leave unless it was for the bathroom. And the cherry on top was it wasn't her room in her apartment. Marinette ran home to her parents, sleeping in the now storage bedroom of her business. At least past her, took down photos of Adrian years ago when he broke her heart. Which part of this was worse? Adrian breaking up with her a few years ago without a second chance? Or Kat telling Adrian her secret identity? At least the breakup came with a cat to comfort her. The past three days, it'd been a worried Tiki and occasional check-ins from her mother. It didn't matter. This hurt. She hurt. If Marinette could rip her heart out, she would. If she could get akumatized, she wouldn't fight it. And if Cat Noir showed his face... She didn't know what she'd do. She didn't know what she'd do, but she wasn't going to leave this bed until she did. This was it. This was betrayal. It was all over now. He couldn't be trusted anymore. But sometimes when you break down, the only person who can pick you up is yourself. And, surrounded by unwashed blankets and clothes she slept in four times straight, Marinette did. After a week of wallowing and webtoons, it just clicked. Marinette sat up, washed her hair, and did her laundry. Just like that, she was fine on the outside. Dodging questions with smiles and thank yous, numb to what she put herself through. Numb to what happened to her and her trust. Numb so she couldn't feel what happened to her and her trust. Oh, wow. Hey. Alia detangled herself from Nino and stood up as Marinette walked into their apartment. You're here. Did Kat stop by? Marinette didn't want to know the answer, but part of her wanted to yell right now. Um, no, no, he didn't. Also, are are you okay? How was the gala? I haven't heard from you. I would have thought you eloped if your mom hadn't said something. (laughs) No eloping, thanks. Marinette dropped her purse on the table and plopped into a chair. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. Um, we're gonna grab a bite. Wanna come? She should. Marinette knew it would make her feel better, but it wasn't worth the risk of feeling like a third wheel. I'm good. I'm gonna whip the business back into shape. Oh, thank miraculous. Alia all but deflated into Nino's arms. 
I've been trying my best, but I'm so glad you're back. I mean, think like Akuma level happy. Like, attract the butterflies with relief and happiness instead of negative emotions, if that makes sense. It does. Go have fun. She pushed up a smile before pushing off the table to retreat to her room. This feeling would pass. She just had to keep going until it did. That afternoon, and the next, and the next, passed like a blur. Did she eat? Did she brush her teeth? Time smeared across the days, and Marinette knew she should kick herself into gear again. But how could she? It wasn't rational to be this sad, but she couldn't help it. It was either be sad or be numb, and she flipped between the two. And, traitorously enough, she missed Kat too much to be mad anymore. They hadn't ever gone this long without speaking, had they? Nothing fractured their partnership like this. Not even him figuring out her identity. Marinette sat up, her comforter wrinkled beneath her. An identity for an identity. There wasn't a shadow moth anymore. Did they need to keep hiding themselves? The idea overtook her like a hyperfixation, and she couldn't see anything else. Knowing she'd hate herself when the manic faded away, Marinette texted Cat Noir through the Discord chat, then threw her phone out across the room. There! She'd done it! As expected, she heard the living room window open on the other side of the door, followed by the sound of a superhero landing. He was here. Cat was here at her beck and call. Oh, she wanted to cry, but she had a perpetual headache from doing that over the past week. She waited for him to call her name. But he didn't. Silence passed until it suffocated her, and Marinette opened the door to get some air. There he was, her partner, with a beige tote hung over his shoulder as he leaned against the exterior brick like a model. Marinette tucked hair behind her ear when they made eye contact, and couldn't return the generous smile he tried to trade her. Hey, she said looking at how the hardwood floor held dents from generations past instead of at him. Hey. She heard him set the bag on the coffee table and closed her eyes. Uh, thanks. Anytime. I know. She had his loyalty, even with his betrayal. She had to move the conversation. Sit with me. They made their way to the couch, awkward and tight in posture as they sat next to each other, facing the television instead of acting like two friends about to have a conversation. I didn't tell him. Cat broke the silence first. Oh, please, she scoffed, unable to discern what she felt for him anymore. I don't think out of everyone in my life, past or present, Adrian Agrest would be the one to figure it out on his own. I didn't have to tell him. His response turned her mouth, and Marinette could taste her teeth. Wait, are you? She turned slightly, her thigh dipping into the upholstery. Are you serious? Looking straight on, she knew he wasn't lying. This cat. He found out the same day I did. Ever since... Heat hit her cheeks. Hopelessly in love with her. It wasn't just the gala. That sly man. All this time, he'd... 
what, he'd known? So it wasn't just him being a jerk in front of an ex? He'd... known? And he still took her to the gala, knowing she knew they were exes? Sorry. No, no. Marinette tasted blood and realized she'd bitten her lip again. You don't need to apologize on his behalf. No, really, I should. Can't please. If anyone should apologize, it would be me after I threw a week-long tantrum about my ex-boyfriend finding out my identity and telling me he, she made quotations in the air, could love me. Ugh. You don't think he thought you'd slap him out right if he said he loved you? Please. Adrian Agrest wouldn't recognize the love of his life, even if they dropped from the sky. Her finger came away bloody as she touched her lip. The guy needs to be single for a while, in my opinion. And if he finds love sitting in front of him? Do you know how many people he's dated? He's found it. He just can't recognize it. Her words were meant to be a tease, but somehow it was a slap to herself hopelessly in love. He'd said that to her. He could recognize it. So why hadn't he the first time around? I suppose you're right. He ran a hand over his mask, then down his jawline. But the woman who pretended to have a boyfriend for multiple years isn't one to judge. He had a point. You know what I thought about this past week? What ate me, spinning in a circle in my brain far past the point of dizziness? That it's a shame your partner is so ruggedly handsome because you can't stay mad at him with a face like that? It was hard to hold back her strength as she smacked him with a throw pillow. I thought about how I couldn't trust you anymore, you goof. I'm your goof. Cat Noir! Of all the times for him to flash a grin and wiggle his eyebrows. I'm trying to be serious right now. My lady, you smacked me with a pillow with a picture of a llama on it. First of all, it's an alpaca and... And there are pom-poms on it. It's in my nature to go into play mode when pom-poms are involved. It was sound logic, and Marinette hated it. One of her favorite Akuma Fight Funny Moments compilation videos featured Cat going bonkers during an Akuma fight with a giant Akuma victim who had pom-poms on their socks, and she couldn't, for the life of her, get Cat Noir's attention until he'd torn them off. Anyway, I was mad, and I'm sorry. If I were you, I'd be mad at me. Oh, please, stop. I mean it. He wrapped an arm around her and pulled her to his chest. And I missed you too. I didn't say I missed you, she mumbled, reaching to touch his forearm. Keep talking like that and you'll be back to fake dating a fake person. Please, Adrian Agress told me he could love me, you know. So what, you'll give him a second chance when you turn 30? Eh, I'd rather you be my roommate when Alia and Nino finally get married. <sighs> Marinette, you're killing me. What? She looked up at him, taken aback by the space, rather lack of space between them. Something was different. Without thinking twice, she reached up and traced the edge of his mask with her fingertips. It's not like she could remove it for him, but for a moment, she let herself wonder. She'd started letting herself wonder a little too often these days. Want me... want me to... to take it off? 
The question came out hoarse, and it wasn't an offer. It was a plea, so abrupt it didn't fit into the lighthearted mood they settled into. But she couldn't. If he did, her last thread of restraint would break. Whomever was under that mask, she'd curl into him and never let him go. She needed her independence. Crippling herself with another person wasn't an option for her yet. She had too many plans for the next five years to get lost in a relationship. Her five-year plan didn't include this man without cat ears. But her current self wanted her to say yes and then kiss him. Crazy woman. But somehow... Everything worked up to this reveal. Their entire relationship built and twisted, grew and pruned itself for the moment they looked at each other without masks on. But she couldn't do it. She shouldn't do it. Wouldn't you love that? She replied, blinking slowly like two cats spending time together. He swallowed, then looked away, tearing his cheekbones away from her fingers. I should go. Marinette's shoulders grew cold as he slid away to stand. Cat? He wanted to leave? Just like that? I hope you feel better, LB. I can't wait, you... But he was gone leaping out the window without a second glance, leaving her to realize the couch was too big for one person to sit on. She didn't have a lot to go off of, but it almost felt like... Well, it almost felt like he just dumped her. Well, perhaps that was a dramatic conclusion, but like a hot shower, the thought burned her as a steam of clarity swelled up, fogging anything else. He wanted her to know who he was. He wanted to be together without masks and in public. He didn't want to carry a secret by himself. Oh, Cat Noir, what good is a plan without her partner? How did it take her this long? Why did it take getting asked by her ex for her to finally move on in a somewhat healthy way? Besides, she hadn't had a five-year plan of him without cat ears, but she certainly penciled in the triangle-wearing man into all of her considerations. Who cares what he looked like without accessories? She'd do it. Next time, she'd do it. Marinette would ask Cat Noir to take off his mask. Thank you so much for listening. Part 24 is on the way. If you enjoyed this part, you can support this video by leaving a like and a comment. If you don't know what to comment, put Cat Noir's mask. I will catch you in the next one. Bye! If this didn't record, I'm going to be so sad. Oh, thank goodness. Whew. There's always that little moment of